at the house. You staying busy? Yes, sir. I'm uh, running and exercise. Uh, running and exercise. Love to hear that. School work too, right? Totally. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Good. How about Alex? How are you doing? Good. Good. What are you doing to stay busy? Um, staying busy, just doing all the Taekwondo bingo stuff. <laughs> oh, I like it. What's your favorite video you've watched so far? Um, I, I mostly looked at most of the entertain, entertainment <laughs> stuff. Not the, not the physical challenges? Well, I did, but yeah, I, I also looked at them too. They were pretty cool. I like it. I like it. Let's see who else is here. Leela and Dahlia, I like your shirts. Hey, hey. How are you guys doing? Good. Good? Yeah. All right. Are you guys doing a lot of chores at the house? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take We're the no answer as a yes. I was in the middle of a, of a video game in my, in my new Nintendo Switch. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. We're playing games a lot. <laughs> Lots of games. I like that. I like I'm that. And also we have a new new toy that glows in the dark. Oh, that's fun. Well, here we go. Oh. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Focus. <laughs> Come on. What? Oh, my what? God. Ah. Let's see. <laughs> Lance, how you doing over there? Good. Good. What are you doing to stay busy? Um, I'm actually at my river house doing yard work. Ooh, that's cool. How about have you been watching any of the videos that we put on the website? Yes. What's your favorite one so far? Um, probably the no contact. That was pretty self was pretty funny. Oh. Self defense, huh? Perfect. <laughs> yes. Petri family, how we doing? Good. Good, good questions you guys submitted. <laughs> we'll have some fun answering everything today. I'm glad everybody's on the call. We're gonna wait just a minute here. All right. Zach, how are you doing over there? Pretty good. Good. What are you doing to stay busy? Um, creative stuff. We have a puzzle going on. We've, I've done a few chores, but. A few chores? You should be going like eight hours of chores. <laughs> <laughs> Hadn't been doing much schoolwork because our classroom assignments got suspended for some reason. Wow. You can just make up your own stuff. There's this new thing called the internet. You can learn all kinds of cool things. <laughs> Marin, how are we doing over there? Good, Marion? Yes. yes. Basil in the background. Oh, nice flip over there. <laughs> <laughs> and Kendall's in the Wilkerson house. You got a little mini dojang over there, huh? Yay! And is it someone's birthday today? Yes, it is. Well, how old are you now? Ten. Ten years old. Happy birthday. Thank you. Let's see. All right, we got 24 different people on. Adrian, how you doing over there, bud? Good. Good. Are you staying busy? Lots of push-ups? <laughs> yeah, are you cleaning a lot of dishes? No. No? You gotta help mom around the house, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. You know, we can't uh, 
uh, obviously physically connect inside the Taekwondo school because of the, the, the situation, but I think everybody's making the best of it that they can. So I want to thank you guys for being on here today. And you know, I, I thought about it and this is a neat way for us to connect in a different, different way. I've never done a question and answer with a whole bunch of people and some of the questions you guys sent in uh, were really, really creative and awesome and fun. Uh, and how it's gonna work today is I've got some uh, kind of quick lighthearted questions and then we're gonna get a little thicker as we go through. Um, and then I'll announce some of the winners that we have uh, for our Wi-Fi t-shirt. Um, but once again, thanks everybody for being on here. Uh, and then all the parents that, that are either listening or on the, the call, I know that we sent out a text yesterday and we've been trying to send some emails every few days. We don't ever want to uh, uh, send so many things that is bothering anybody, but if you have a preference, if you'd like to receive emails for updates or text for updates, just message us so we know what your preference is. And, uh, and again, we, we, ever, we never try to send too much stuff out because we don't want to bother our families, but uh, we appreciate the, the communication we've received uh, in this crazy time that we're all going through. Um, so let's see here. We're going to kind of start with some of the, the fast and furious questions here. Uh, this one comes from Gracie. She said, what is my favorite animal? I don't exactly know why this is my favorite animal, but it was one that I really liked when I was, uh, was younger. Uh, my favorite animal is a Komodo dragon. A Komodo dragon. And this one comes from Alex. I had quite a few questions about my hair. So we're going to sum them all up from, uh, from your question. Uh, what kind of hair products are you using to keep your hair up and looking perfect? First of all, thank you for the compliment and thank you for noticing. Uh, second, I use a product called Elmer's Glue. No, I'm just kidding. Don't use Elmer's Glue. Uh, no, the product is actually called got to be It's like available at uh, uh, Publix or Target or Walmart uh, at most places. And then he has a second part to that question is if I use the same hair product, if he uses the same hair products, will it help him uh, to jump and kick as good as me and be the best at Taekwondo? The answer is absolutely it will. Uh, no, no, in all seriousness, you know, I think it's important that if it's hair or the way that we, we look or dress, when we take care of ourselves and we look good, look the best that we can, if it's dressing up for uh, school or work or Taekwondo, making sure our uniform is taken care of, when we look good, we're going to feel good. And when we feel good, it's going to allow us to really do good or be our best. So I think it's an important um, aspect. Uh, this is from Bridley. Uh, she said, if I could visit any country, where would it be? That's a great question. Um, and as of right now, we are all stuck in our house. But if I can go anywhere, I think uh, Australia has always been on my, my list. And I can't wait to someday visit uh, the country that Taekwondo comes from and, uh, and go to South Korea. So I'm excited to go uh, to both of those places at some point in our lives. And then she had a second question is if I did not teach Taekwondo, what would I do? Another good question. Like the answer in my mind is no, I'm supposed to be a Taekwondo teacher. Um, but I think uh, really something that allows me to be the best uh, that, that I, I can be uh, on a personal level, professional level. And if I can help raise people around me, I think that's really what I was uh, uh, like born to do or want to do in my life. If there was a sport that I had to play besides Taekwondo, I think I would really try to get into golf. Thank you for that question. Uh, Marion, you said, how do you become a master in Taekwondo? Great question. Uh, so once you come through all of our color belts, and then you, of course, become black belt. You are a first degree black belt. And then after years more of training, um, then you can test for your second degree and third degree. There's actually nine total degrees of black belt uh, in Taekwondo. But when you become fourth degree, uh, then you become a master in Taekwondo. And usually around seventh or eighth degree, then you become considered a grand master in Taekwondo. All right, this one comes from Jackson, said, what is the funniest thing you've ever seen a kid do? 
Uh, now keep in mind, I've literally worked with tens of thousands of students. So I've pretty much seen almost everything that someone can do in front of other people. Um, it is, uh, this, this is pretty funny. Um, I've seen some of the most talented nose picking abilities in my entire <laughs> life. I've seen the two finger switches. I've seen two fingers at the same time. It is, it is, it is as disgusting as it could be, it's also impressive to a certain level. <laughs> um, hopefully none of you guys have ever picked your nose on my mat. Um, and then the second one, this wasn't funny at the time, but looking back at it, I think we can laugh about it, is uh, I actually watched a student on their very first group class throw a front rising kick, kick themselves in the face, they didn't get hurt, but they did knock their own tooth out on day one. And so again, it wasn't funny at the moment. We wanted to make sure they were okay and they, they were not hurt or anything. But uh, looking back at it, it was pretty funny um, at that point in time. All right, this one comes from Andrew. He says, do you play video games? Um, I do not currently play video games. I used to, to be honest, I have an Xbox One. I haven't turned my Xbox on in a few years. Um, but actually what I remember about my video games, I grew up with uh, some of your parents will know uh, the original Nintendo, the NES. But my favorite one was actually a, a console called uh, Nintendo 64. And I like the game Mario Kart, which I think most of you guys know the newer versions of that. Um, and also a game called GoldenEye, which was a James Bond game. Good question. Uh, this one comes from Anna. Uh, she says, if all of the black belts you present, say presented by Master Scarcella, with all the black belts you'll see in Korean, it says presented by Master Scarcella, what does my belt say? Of course, it can't say presented by myself. Mine actually says from my teacher, presented by Grandmaster Sun Ki Chung. Good question, Anna. Uh, this one comes from one of your teachers, Mr. Caleb. Said, what age did you learn how to do a backflip? Uh, I actually learned a backflip twice. When I was 17, I learned the wrong way to do it, which means I landed on my head. So that's why I'm going to recommend no one go out and learn a backflip. And then at the age of 21, I did learn the correct way of doing a backflip. This one comes from Grant. Do you have any pets? Uh, I actually have two pets. I have a dog named Saber, uh, and that really comes from my favorite hockey team, which is the Buffalo Sabres, and I'm originally from Buffalo, New York. Um, and then I also have a dog named Tay, like Taekwondo. Uh, both are uh, from the Humane Society, cute little guys that just bark way too much. Uh, this one, this is a fun one. This one comes from Lily. She asked, how much weight can you lift? I like that. How about uh, for me, you know, I love Taekwondo. I love learning about how the, the, the body works and body mechanics. And I've gotten into all kinds of different physical endeavors from trail running and endurance running to strength training to CrossFit. Um, and at one point I did get into to see uh, the, the big lifts. How much, how much weight can I lift? And at, the, at that point, I lifted over three times my body weight once uh, and lifted 475 pounds with a move called a deadlift. All right, those are kind of our fast and furious questions. These next ones kind of go a little deeper. Uh, this one comes from Miss Victoria. She asked, what is the best advice a master ever gave you? Um, I had to kind of sum it up because I've had such uh, awesome teachers. Uh, and actually, wanted, I brought some pictures so you can see some of my teachers. Of course, you guys see the pictures in the school of Grandmaster Chong. Um, but this was actually my very first teacher. His name was Master. Jay Kim, and he actually has a world-class school now in South Korea. And he's the teacher that actually took me from white belt to black belt. And then, or South Carolina, I'm sorry. Um, and then this is another picture, and you can see two masters in this photo. That's Master Huang and Master Yu. And they were the teachers that really were the, the, my main instructors from black belt into second degree black belt. Um, and I've had, of course, multiple other teachers throughout those years. Um, but I would really say as far as the best advice to sum it all up was to be humble and hungry. Like no matter how good we get at something, if it's uh, kicking techniques or teaching or, or whatever skills you develop, always be grounded in 
uh, the, the fundamentals and have a great foundation and make sure we don't ever have uh, uh, let our confidence turn into a cockiness, but make sure that we're always thankful for where we are and what we are able to do. And at the same time, always be hungry to continue your growth and continue developing people around you and taking the next step uh, in your own personal potential. Um, she also asked, Ms. Victoria also asked, what would my dream board breaking technique would be? Something that uh, I've seen some of my instructors do and my masters do that I've always wanted to do. And at some point I'll do it. I don't know if it'll be for uh, my sixth degree black belt test, however many years from now, um, but something called a triple 540 where you throw a 540 degree spinning kick and you break three boards while you're rotating uh, almost two full times in the air. So at some point I'm gonna do that for our students. And then she also asked, what is the hardest thing I've ever done inside the Taekwondo school and outside the Taekwondo school? Uh, you know, as far as inside the Taekwondo school, I look back and, and I, it's, it's very humbling. I used that word a second ago of what we've been able to accomplish uh, for, for our own schools here in Birmingham and we're really where world-class Taekwondo has come from. And I think the hardest thing, it wasn't really any single moment but it's just staying on the path, right? Life can offer so many ways of getting distracted and coming off the path and, and uh, going a different route or so doing something that might be the easier way or something that might be uh, look more rewarding. But to think about the, the thousands of students that I've worked with and the stories that I hear uh, and the benefits that have been given to, to other people uh, is, is really neat to see. And if I didn't stay the path, you just don't even know how far that someone can go. So to be honest, I never thought like, oh, I'm gonna have a big Taekwondo school. I thought that might be cool, right? But until it actually became a, a, a possibility of being a reality, it never even like crossed my mind at that point in time. So I think it's uh, uh, really just staying the path of the 20 plus years of teaching and 20, almost 25 years of training. As far as the hardest thing I've ever done outside of the Taekwondo school, uh, I have like one physical one. I talked about lifting the, the, the weight, but I actually challenged myself uh, to run a marathon, um, which uh, I give so much credit to anybody that's ever run a marathon or done long distance training. Um, I, I decided I was going to do a marathon without training long distance though. So I only ran a 10K, which is about six miles a couple times in my life. Um, and a marathon is 26.2 miles. Uh, so I did some strength training and I really uh, tried to understand some uh, long distance protocols and did some uh, uh, sprint work and some neat stuff. Uh, so I ended up running 26 miles and I can tell you that at the end of it, it was physically the hardest thing I've ever done. It was even like uh, to the point that I was very emotional afterwards, uh, almost wanted to cry because oh, it was just know, overwhelming after you finish something like that. Um, so I give so much credit to everybody that, is, uh, that pushes themselves in any way. And the second one is, as I think most of you guys know, I, I'm in front of people a lot uh, with the teaching and talking and doing different seminars. Um, but that's usually through Taekwondo with people that I know. Um, I had an opportunity a few years ago to do a TEDx youth talk. Um, and uh, leading up to that and figuring out what I wanted to say, figuring out how to say it the right way, and to be on a stage that I didn't know any of the people that were in the audience and have spotlights on you, uh, it was really scary. I remember when, when I went up onto the stage, I had to memorize like word for word this eight minute speech. Uh, we practiced how we were gonna say and what I was gonna say. And I remember on the stage that I was so nervous that my leg was shaking so much that I, I thought like, oh, if I put weight on that leg, I'm gonna fall down in the middle of the stage uh, was how scared I was doing. That was only a few years ago. Uh, so I think it's important no matter if it's in our Taekwondo training or anything else that we're, we're, we're doing, let's try to keep pushing ourselves to the next level. Thank you for your questions there, Miss Victoria. Uh, this, this question was a, a, a good one. Uh, this is from uh, Sarah over in our Hoover location. Uh, she asked, how did I end up in Birmingham? As I think most of our students, Jessica, uh, most of our students know that I am not originally from Birmingham, but I'm originally from 
Buffalo, New York. And that's where I started my training. And I learned uh, really how to teach and how to do Taekwondo. And then at the age of 19, um, one of our uh, school instructors was actually expanding our world-class system. Um, so after you work with Grandmaster Chong for long enough, he encourages uh, his head instructors to go out and spread the benefits of Taekwondo to uh, other parts of the country. So now you guys will see the map in our schools that we have uh, uh, almost 30 world-class affiliates with all of the instructors coming from directly from Buffalo. Um, and for how we came to Birmingham is we were actually looking all over the country where to expand. And we had a couple of black belts in the school in Buffalo and their father asked um, that we should look at Birmingham. So we actually came down, we saw how pretty it was, how nice the people were. Um, of course, we did the research on, on specific demographics, making sure this was a good place to be. And then uh, once I came to visit, I loved it. Uh, I do miss Buffalo. I miss uh, the family, of course, and I miss the food. Um, but really, the, the Birmingham, I love the, the, the people around, how nice everybody is, the weather you can't beat. Uh, and of course, now you guys are, uh, are our family, our home. So I, I love being in Birmingham. She had a second question, which was actually a very common question from all of our Taekwondo moms, is how did you and Miss Jessica meet and start dating? How about this one? I'm going to have uh, Miss Jessica answer this one. Are you serious? She did not know this was coming. So we're going to have a special guest on this, uh, this call. Can you guys give like a, a round of applause to Miss Jessica? Hey, everybody. <laughs> Well, um, I was a preschool teacher at Primrose Preschool, and Master Scarcella had a friend whose children uh, went to Primrose, and his oldest daughter was in my class. Um, so Justin would come pick the kids up um, as a favor to his friends sometimes, and so that's how I first laid eyes on him. I could tell he was not from not from around here. <laughs> He's lost his accent a little bit, but back then the hair. you could really tell. <laughs> Um, but we started dating, and that was um, 12 years ago, and the rest is history. So that's how we met, through Primrose Preschool. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Jessica. Give her a good hand. Uh, the other question that came along with that question from a lot of our, our Taekwondo moms uh, was, when did she start Taekwondo? She actually started Taekwondo after uh, we got married. Uh, she, she eventually figured out that I was so addicted to Taekwondo that the only way she was going to see me regularly is if she got into Taekwondo. Um, all right, our next question. So these ones, uh, these questions were really, really good. Uh, a little deeper. Uh, Cademan, you must have watched the interview with me, right? Where's Cademan? There he is. Did you watch the interview with me on the website? Give me the thumbs up. No? Okay. <laughs> How about... Uh, uh, he asked, why did you almost stop taking Taekwondo when you were a blue belt and what made you keep going? You know, I use this story at some of our testings or sometimes if someone has uh, some uh, demotivation uh, in their training that I think it's important to realize that, that things don't always go super smoothly the whole way. And to be honest, they're not supposed to go super smoothly the whole time. There's supposed to be tough times and that's really where we learn about perseverance. We learn perseverance because we persevere. Uh, so when I was a blue belt, I, I was 13 years old. Um, and as some of you guys are, and some of you guys will find out when you're a teenager, you know, you get lots of emotions and different feelings and, and sometimes you take things very sensitively. Um, so, you know, at 13, a lot of my friends were playing team sports and football and uh, doing some uh, other type of things that they thought were really cool. Uh, and not that martial arts wasn't cool, but it wasn't a thing that a lot of people were doing. So I think I was pretty self-conscious of that. Um, and I was really trying to kind of took into account a lot of people what they thought and not what I thought. Um, and I remember sitting down at my desk when I was a blue belt at 13 years old and and I thought, okay, yeah, maybe I could do something that other people would think I'd be cool and do football or things like that. Not, I was too small, so I wouldn't do well at that. But then I thought about like, not what other people want, but what do I want? And I thought, okay, you know what? I, I feel like when I go to the Taekwondo Dojang and see my teachers and my friends from class, that's like my second home, right? Uh, that was where I felt like my best. I can push myself and I, can, I, I felt good, uh, I didn't have to worry about people saying something about 
about me or bullying me or saying negative things. And, and when I thought about what I wanted and how good I felt at being a Taekwondo, that's why I, uh, I stuck it out. And from there, I really had some, some really good motivation. There's always going to be frustrations. Um, but that was the, the big tipping point for me. Um, going to our next question. This comes from one of our Taekwondo dads, Jesus. Uh, he said, from my standpoint, you are a true leader and a great example for our kids. But I think you are also a great example for us as adults because you are a highly resilient, uh, highly resilient person. Because resilience is important. What do you think is the best way to explain or teach our kids to be more resilient? First of all, uh, I'm very humbled by, by your, your comments and reflection there. And I thank you for that. And thank you for being part of our school. Um, you know, that's a, that's a good one. I think if it's resiliency or any of the intrinsic values and character skills that we try to teach in our school, I think we can be pretty well versed in it. I can talk about it, but really the, the key is to show it. I think so many of us want to be where we show that we never have failures and we just get better and we have successes. It's easy to talk about that, especially in this day and age where so much stuff is on social media that people only put themselves when they're they're at their best or people only show the things that that went well but especially something like resiliency i think it's important to show that it's okay to fail it's okay not to be perfect all the time uh some of my instructors always talk about uh, oh you're so good at when you're teaching talking about stories um and they tell me oh i don't have any stories i'm like well you do have stories uh but you just are thinking about the successes that you want to have and not the failures how many times have you failed doing a spinning kick or a new level kick or a board break and then i tell them like all the stories i tell are about when things didn't go my way those are the ways that we we get to relate um so we get verbiage after we have the experiences um, and just really being the example for if it's youth for the students or for, for kids, show them that it's okay, things didn't go our way, and then what we learn from it and be open about it. Um, so I tell my ins instructors that it's okay to fail, but when we fail, let's fail forward, let's learn from it, let's fail fast. So if we're going to do it, let's go out there and try it and learn from it uh, as quickly as we can, and then let's fail frequently. Just because we fail once uh, doesn't mean that's the end of it, right? That is actually just the first step, so we want to keep it going. So fail forward, fail frequent, uh, and, fail, uh, and fail fast. Um, and actually, Jesus, I have two people that are going to win the, the Y5 t-shirt. Um, so, Jesus, I'm going to be sending you a Y5 t-shirt for that question. Great question. A um, few more. We've got, uh, this is from Emilio. He said, uh, do you sometimes struggle to keep a positive attitude and a positive influence in the school? Uh, if that happens, what works for you to overcome it? Also, a very well thought out, deep question from one of our black belts at our Inverness locations. Um, you know, that, uh, that just reminds me that one of my favorite authors uh, and speakers, I've, I've listened to his audiobooks and uh, I've, I've read a lot of his books. His name is Zig Ziglar. Uh, he talked about motivation. Uh, and he said, motivation isn't something you wake up with. Motivation isn't something that you just have. Like we might get excited about something, but motivation is like showering. Like, you have to shower every single day to stay clean, right? And motivation is the same way. So I think it's important that, that when we don't feel good to realize it's normal, right? We're supposed to feel frustrated. We're supposed to have some negative thoughts. We're supposed to, to have things that, that, okay, don't make us feel good and realize that's okay. But then once we realize that, then let's do the right things uh, and think the right things to get past that. Um, so I think it's important to make sure you have good people around you. If it was me growing up, I had a great family. I had a great Taekwondo school. Um, right now, if I don't feel good, I love having Miss Jessica as, uh, uh, at my side so she can support me. Um, and I also love having a great team of instructors, as you, guys, as you guys know. So it's important to put good people around you. Um, and then also just remember that, that we can't be the best at everything. We can't always have the successes, but all we can do is our best. Right? If we do our best, the result actually doesn't matter. The result is, is just whatever it is at that moment in time. Some things go our way, some things don't. And as long as we're going to the next step and doing it again, that's what it's all about. So another great question, Emilio. And you also win a Y5 t-shirt. 
All right. Uh, this comes from Miss Mandy. She said, how old were you when you knew you wanted to be a Taekwondo master? Um, you know, I think like most of our, our students that uh, we set the goal that we want to be a black belt. And I had that. Like I knew, especially after I was a blue belt, black belt was it. There was, there was like black belt or nothing else. Um, and then after black belt, uh, I, I'm, I'm still huge in setting goals. But I think more importantly, it's, it's more about what is my next step? And let me face it with everything I've got. So to be honest, I don't ever remember a moment that I was like, yes, I have to be a Taekwondo master. I want to be a Taekwondo master. I thought that was cool, but all I want to do is just work as hard as I can at whatever I'm doing in the moment and then be able to look back and all of a sudden, uh, Taekwondo master was right there. And don't get me wrong, I love the, the testing and the procedure to get there and the years of invested, but it was just putting one foot in front of the other. And then she also asked, if your students could learn one thing from you, what would it be? Um, I, uh, we actually even have t-shirts made of this quote, and I said it in my TEDx talk, um, was that we should have, give ourselves two choices in anything that we do. We either work hard or harder. Um, and really that idea that, that if I had one thing that I want my students to get out of our program, uh, our training, going through our system, is that I want our students to make hard work what you love to do, not just working hard at what you love. Right? So if it's something that we enjoy doing or don't enjoy doing it, let's give our best to, uh, to that activity and that endeavor. Thank you, Ms. Mandy. All right, we've got just, uh, I think, three more. Um, this comes from Sweden. She said, if I could go back and redo when I was a teenager, what would I, uh, what would I change? Um, I think it's important to, to know a little bit about me as a teenager. I was, like I said earlier, a little pretty sensitive, I would say. Um, I was also a perfectionist, so I wanted everything to be done uh, perfect. I wanted to always have the successes. And, uh, and because of that, you know, if someone um, said something or even joked with me, sometimes I took it uh, very much to heart. Um, or if I didn't uh, perform at the absolute top level, I was always down on myself. So if anything, I would say to be a little lighter on myself. Be okay with not being perfect all the time. Be okay with making mistakes um, and, uh, and not care so much about what other people say about me, but just remember who I am and think about more of the people that love me in my life. Um, so as a teenager, I would, I would try and like uh, block out more of the negative and just be able to enjoy more of the moments, uh, especially the good moments um, that make me a better person. Thank you, Sweden. All right, I have a question that came in, but I'm actually gonna turn this one around. Um, this one was, if your life was a movie someday, who would you want to play as you? Um, I think the obvious answer might be like a Zac Efron, um, but I'm gonna actually flip this around. I would love to hear you guys put it on our Facebook page, uh, use Messenger, send us an email. I would love to know who you think each of our instructors should be played with, played by in a movie um, as actors. So who do you think would play me? Who do you think would play Miss Jessica, Mr. Turnbow, uh, Mr. Cher, Mr. Maria, Miss Victoria? Throw them out there if you have a good one. I'd love to see your answers on that one. And before we get to our last question here, I thought I'd show you guys a couple, a uh, couple more pictures um, and a little bit of history. You know, me, me and Mr. Cher. Um, we grew up together. We tested for second degree black belt together. We did a lot of tournaments together. I think I'm, I'm about an inch taller than him now, but this was when we were teenagers. Oh yeah. He had really nice hair. Not that he doesn't have nice hair now. He had really nice hair back then. This was that scary moment of the TEDx talk. And then this picture is when I tested for my first degree black belt, giving my mom a big hug. I believe my mom is actually listening today. All right. Uh, so this one, this is uh, for Kendall Wilkerson. It is her birthday. Everybody say happy birthday. And she asked for me to share my favorite birthday memory from when, when I was a kid. I have a kind of a funny story with, uh, with my birthday. Uh, I was born on Labor Day, 
Um, so the, in Buffalo, that's actually when all the schools go back in session. In, in Birmingham, of course, we go back usually early August. Um, my birthday is early September. So I, I, a lot of times the first day of school would fall on my birthday. So that was always my birthday, my, my birthday gift. Um, but I want to uh, send a special happy birthday to Kendall today. And if everybody on the call, can we do a special way of welcome or, or I guess saying happy birthday uh, to Kendall. In our black belt classes, if you come to class on your birthday, we actually sing happy birthday while doing burpees. So if everybody that's on the call here, could you join me in singing happy <laughs> birthday to Kendall while we do birthday, birthday burpees? I am going to unmute everybody. Hello. There we go. Hello. Let's do it here. All right, everybody ready? Give me the thumbs up. Get some room on the count of three. Wait, I'm going to do it. Oh, this is going to be bad. Happy birthday. <laughs> like it. Happy birthday, Kendall. I hope everybody had some fun with me today. I had a fucking good time. Um, and uh, with, if there were questions we didn't answer, it's like a broken record. We'll try to answer some individually. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.